So I've just finished building my new cross-country bike, hopefully my cross-country race bike for 2024 with a Fox Float SL, brand new for 2024. And I'm not happy. Why am I not happy? Because I took the bike for its first ride and the rear suspension felt nice and smooth, but way too soft off the top and ramping up way too much. And what I found when I looked online, there's almost nothing so far on this new Fox Float SL shop. I can't find any reviews, I can just find first looks, and I can find very, very little information. So hopefully this is going to be helpful. We're going to open the shock up, have a look, and think about how we can tune it. Okay, so here is the shock on the bench. It is a performance model, so that's the bottom of the range, So, and it doesn't have any remote lockout features. So it has a simple open, closed lockout lever, which if we're doing any servicing, we want it on fully open. And it has rebound adjustment. Again, I've got that on fully open or on fast while we're, while we're doing some servicing. And maybe just one thing to notice while we're, um, while we're here before we start taking it to pieces, I think, if I can get this to, to focus, I think that I can see, yep, I can see an M and I can see three dots on the bottom of the shock. I'm going to presume that that is some tuning information. So this is going to be a medium tune on the shock, which is exactly what I need for this bike. So let's open it up and see what we find inside. I have the shock in soft jaws in the vise, so I don't do any damage to it. Quick kind of couple of things just to make sure we check before we go any further. So to make sure all the air is removed. So there's zero pressure in the shock. So when you take this air can off, it won't go flying to the other end of the workshop or into my face. I've got the, the shock is, is open, so it's fast rebound in open mode. And I just need to take off this air cap, which I didn't take off before. And then just one quick thing before we open up the shock is just, I'm just gonna put a rag through this eyelet just to make sure that nothing goes flying or it catches it if anything does go flying while we're, while we're working on it. And like I say, I've not been able to find anything online about this, but I'm pretty sure Things look pretty standard. I'm pretty sure that the shock is going to open up in the same way as most shocks. So I've got it clamped at the air can end rather than at the shaft end. And this should just unscrew nice and easily. It'd be interesting to see how much um, how much grease or how much oil is in is in this is in this shock, because shock the fox has had a bit of a reputation for um, building shocks too dry recently, and this is the first time we've had it open, so let's see how we go. So, oh, that's coming open nice and easily. What are we going to find inside? Okay, so let's take this rag off because things are not going to fly out anymore. Take off that O-ring. Okay. So, opening up, no surprises so far. Everything looking very similar to Fox DPSs that I've worked on in the past. And let's just pull this right off, there we go. So it's the air can off and just looking inside here, this is looking exactly the same kind of setup as Fox DPSs and Fox floats, Fox float Xs that I've worked on in the past. The difference here with the Flight SL is it's a new cross-country shop. It's a much narrower, smaller volume air can than, um, than the, other, uh, the other shocks in the float range. So I'm quite surprised that I've got what looks like two volume spaces in here. So we've got a smaller air can and volume spaces in here. So the volume of air inside the shock is really small. So I think this explains why when I went on that first ride and I was all excited about my new cross-country bike, I was finding it the travel too soft at the top, but then it wasn't bottoming out. It was ramping up too much. If I remove one or two of these spaces, that will give the, the I'll get a better air spring. So hopefully I should get slightly firmer at the top and it will bottom out more easily and my bike 
is going to feel much, much better. Now, I... Let's have a look. So these are different to some of the spaces that I've seen in the past. These are just going to slide off, I think. Yep. And then if you look closely, um, in the past some of these have had some, uh, some markings or some writing on. I see nothing on here. Um, but you do want to make sure you put it back the right way. So this side, look, is flat. This side is not, and it was in the shot that way. So um, the this, this, this side pointing towards all the dials and, and bits like that. To see how I get on, to tune this shock, I'm going to try taking both of these out. Let's see what happens. And if it's not right, I can always pop one of them back in after my next ride. So let's take this one out. Okay. And then another thing I've noticed while I'm in here, I was half expecting to see um, some kind of spaces to adjust the stroke of these shocks, which I've seen before. I don't see anything here. So without any, uh, any instructions out from Fox, I haven't seen anything online yet. I don't know if you can adjust the stroke of these shocks like you have been able to with some of them before. It's quite well oiled. Um, we probably do with a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head up to the other end of the workshop. I am going to put a little bit more um, Fox, Fox fluid in this and button it all back, back up, but without these spaces. And then I'll go on a ride and see, see how it performs. I hope this has been helpful. I'm interested to hear what, how people are finding the Fox Float SL. Is it working well for you? Is it not working well for you? Maybe the design of my bike's just not great. We will see. Drop your thoughts down in the comments and be interested to see what you got.